Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the sports betting show brought to you by a real statistics professor, Cousin Jared. We are here for Major League Baseball Tuesday, June 18th. Uh, I, I decided to highlight all the wins in green just because that seemed fun. And I made the joke on Twitter that I was like, I, I, I decided to choose the color for the loss. Actually, I didn't decide to choose the color for the loss. I didn't have to. Because uh, it's all green. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's it, like you said, we, we've said before that good times won't last forever. Uh, we do. But they are lasting. <laughs> they are lasting for quite a while. Uh, and so you know, again, just jump on board now. Uh, I mean, we don't know how many other ways we we can say it. It's a good time to be part of the picks with the professor group. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what else to say? Uh, what I want to call your attention to uh, first off, a couple things. The the play of the day is now six straight winning weeks, and I I like that. It's not like one week has gone seven and zero. Oh. It's just a slow and steady rise. And honestly, we've talked about this before. That's that's actually more fun and enjoyable because mm -hmm. the like super highs and lows where he, you know, aren't aren't a lot of fun, but it's just slow and steady profiting, which is gonna people might be like, oh, 30% ROI and then whatever. That's three percent compounded daily. So it's not like it's three percent like on your mm -hmm. interest at a mm -hmm. at a bank, right? That's annual yeah. interest. You know, three percent daily is gonna add up a, a little bit faster. But I want to call people's attention, of course, that bottom line, the other A grades. Those are the the all the specialty picks uh, on top of the play. The day the the, uh, the free pick in, uh, on Twitter, what we give out on show, you know, six percent ROI right there, and, and, and maybe even more so this slide. And we've been talking about this a lot. The best model picks, first fives, full games, sides, and totals. Look at that. If you if you have been over the last month or so, a little bit over a month for this, but but even not even going back that far, if you really trusted the model, and I know there's people out there who have, and have said, you know, I'm just going to put two percent of my bankroll on all the best model picks, you would have more than doubled your bankroll in the last month. I mean, that is just yeah. crazy to think yep. about. I don't, I yep. mean, that's, it, it's hard to wrap your brain around just how good the model has done. Yep. Yep. I completely agree. It has been difficult to wrap your mind around it. Uh, you know, compounding interest, one of, you know, the, the, you know, greatly misunderstood things in the world, like really difficult to wrap your mind around exponential growth. And so, you know, the way that things have been going again, it won't last forever. Uh, yeah. But man, yeah, it's been crazy lately. Yeah. And, and it just keeps happening. It, 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 and we see this all football season and it, and it kept rolling during the NFL and, and college football was so good. And, and now baseball is good. And we're uh, folks, it, it, there's really nothing else to say other than just, you know, you, you should be signing up. It, 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 it'll cost you a little bit of money to get over with us on Dub club. Uh, why is that? Well, cousin Jared, have, have, have you ever, have you ever, you know, had to paint your house? Have you ever painted your house before? I, I, I have the good sense to have somebody else paint my house. When and, I need that and, done. and did you just go get someone for free off the street to do that? Or did you, uh, did you pay him to do it? Oh no, I definitely paid him to do definitely it. Paid him. And, yeah. and, and if you had gotten just like someone off the street, do you think they would have done as good of a job? Uh, I'm going to go with no. I'm, I'm going to go with no too. I don't actually know who that would have been, but I mean, I'm like you, like that just yeah. is a lot of work. And so you, you, you pay someone and they do good work. And and that's the bottom line is that, you know, it's going to cost you a little bit to, to join up, but it's great work that has been put into it. Great material, great, great profits to be had. We always talk about, you know, if you bet any amount of money, you, you can make back in no time and so much more. Uh, we also have the discord chat, which is a lot of fun, a bunch of details. I mean, if you just want to be a smarter, better, all sorts of insights, leans on other games that we don't even have official picks on, just kind of a like where you're like, hey, I kind of think this, all oh, the model kind of agrees. Maybe the model kind of disagrees and just makes you look a little bit deeper, you know, all the pitcher ratings on the team, just all sorts of goodies over there on Dub Club. Uh, again, sign up today with that link in the show description. Uh, we, we've got a, a little bit of an announcement, I, I guess, to say we've – We've somehow fallen out of grace with the YouTube algorithm. I don't really know why. I, I know that our views are not declining because of the product, because it, you know we should have like millions of views at this point, just based off of all the winnings. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless there are only you know a few hundred people in the world who actually bet on sports and actually want to win, and, and I don't think that's true. Right. Um, and, and so we're just gonna try some different things up because you know we we are trying to use our platform here on on the social media platforms to find new people and get new people to join our team over um, on Dub Club because that's where you can make even more money. And so we're gonna try maybe leaning into a little bit more of the shorts and, and stuff like that a little bit quicker. Maybe that's where the world's going, right? Maybe the long form content's not as good. Uh, that, that's sad for, for some of you because some of you like the long form content, obviously, but I don't know where the world's going and, and attention spans and whatnot. And so we're gonna, 
maybe shift a little bit more into the shorts, but we're going to have a fun like giveaway with it. We're going to, I don't know what we're going to call it, you know, maybe like win Mrs. Professor's money or something. We're going to, we're going to bet, you know, some money on a pick each day, post on our social. And, and, and if we win, we're going to give the money away to someone. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be fun. We're just going to try some new things out and just see if we can find new sports better. So of course, always tell your friends uh, because if you've been with us here, you are making so much money and we know that you're a nice person and want to share these products with your friends. So tell your friends, of course, yeah. you got to figure out a way to find uh, more people because for whatever reason, these algorithms are just not liking what we're doing now versus what we did a year ago. And I don't really yeah. turn a lot of different things. So maybe a little bit of a shift up on how often we're on here for a long term, but we'll have some more of the short stuff or not long term, long, long form mm -hmm. uh, short stuff. So just kind of be on your toes for that, but we'll have some fun new things with it. Otherwise, though, standard messaging here, right? Picturethepressor.com slash new will get you some more information if you're looking for it. It is a player-based model. Ratings reflect the current roster. Average grades 100 higher is more runs, so pitching over 100 bad, hitting over 100 good. We are projecting one game. Unfortunately, we can't win every single pick, but as you saw on the slide before, we sure as heck win a whole lot more than we lose and or we win more money when we win than we lose when we lose. So that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. is it doesn't even matter if you win 70% of your picks. If you win 70% of your picks at minus 1,000 odds, you're going to lose money. And if you win 30% of your picks at plus 1,000 odds, you're going to win money. Not that we're betting those yeah. odds necessarily, of course, but the idea is we always try to find the right price and that's what the model helps us do. That's how we profit. And I don't know, if, if, you, if you can't buy into that, based off of seeing the profits on the slides before, I don't really know what else is going to convince you or why you're still here because this is the message we've been preaching for years now. As always, take what you like and leave the rest. That doesn't mean every pick's gonna win and if you have a reason not to like something, that's fine too. But in general, we have a pretty good idea of what the price should be. The price tends to go towards where we think it should go. And that's what we're gonna say here is get these prices while they're good. Sometimes they last, sometimes they don't. And those good prices are what help us profit we've got three great picks for you here on tuesday again never know how any one game is going to go and we have five others already on dub club this is one of the heaviest nights we've had for yeah weeks. the night before monday which we're recording this monday afternoon monday hasn't happened yet for any of the games because they're all night games really really slim pickings on monday like even from the night before the line just looked really tight and it's one of the tightest line days i can ever remember and then tuesday i look at it, i'm like I like this and I like this and I yeah. like this. And I, it's like complete opposite how that works. We have even more over on Dub Club, but these three here are three that we think we've got some great insight for. We're going to start off with Seattle and Cleveland. Uh, Cousin Jared, it, this feels like talking about these two teams, just going back to how great both of them were to us a couple of years yeah. ago. Like, I remember these two teams played each other back that year, a couple of years ago, when we were just betting on each one of these teams, you know, five or six days a week and winning like four of them, it seemed like four or five of them. And they played each other one series and we were just like, like tearing our clothes. Yeah, and like it was, sackcloth and it was absolutely, it was absolutely <laughs> miserable for sure. <laughs> now they're playing each other. We haven't been backing the Mariners that much. The models kind of soured on them a little bit. Their offense is okay. Their overall offensive metrics don't look great because they play in such a pitcher friendly ballpark. But that's actually what I want to talk about here with Bryce Miller and their relievers. Their numbers for the relievers, Bryce Miller look good, but it's a lot of the ballpark factor there where you're talking about the most pitcher friendly park in the country. And it's not even close when you look at these relievers they're getting results based off the park but when you go with them on the road it hasn't been quite as good because the relievers are just meh bryce miller it's a very okay pitcher 348 era but a 348 era in that park where half his starts are in that park doesn't necessarily make for great results his fip is 397 he projects at 4.09 according to the model so projects around at league average where he's going to get really good results at home in cleveland that park is becoming more hitter friendly. They've made some adjustments to that park. We get anytime the wind's blowing uh, out to right field, it kind of creates a wind tunnel. All those lefties in Cleveland, the wind for this one won't be blowing out to right field. It'll be blowing out to left center, but it's going to be 10 miles an hour out to left center. And folks, it's going to be one of the hottest days in Cleveland for a baseball night game I've ever seen. 91 degrees at first pitch, wow. 87 towards the end of this game. Folks, we talked about, if you've been paying attention at all, heat across the country. I, I was hearing this morning that like 60 or 80 or whatever percent of Americans are going to be experiencing 90 degree heat this week, which is like the most we've ever had. And, and it's going to be a hot week everywhere. In Indianapolis here, where I'm at, we're talking about like 
it never does this. It usually cools down. You know, you might get a little bit of heat more into July, August, but for June, it's just insanely hot. It's hot in so many places. Cleveland's going to be one of them. It never gets this hot. Look at that adjustment there. Plus 13%. We take Bryce Miller coming from Seattle where he's usually pitching in 60 degree weather in a pitcher friendly ballpark. And now you put him in a 90 degree atmosphere with the wind blowing out and a literal, like they can throw an all left-handed lineup out in Cleveland. That's mm -hmm. a recipe for some runs. Another recipe for some runs, Tristan McKenzie has not been that great this year. 14 ERA, the underlying metrics are much worse. 564 FIP, XFIP around five. The Guardians relievers are really, really good. We've got the number one in baseball. It's not even close. Uh, we've been touting how good those relievers are all season long, but and, and the season re results for the bullpen is, is, is just through the roof. And that's why yeah. part of why they're rated that way. But that's the only thing that's going to be helping them. This weather, we're expecting a lot of runs. Because I don't love going over eight a lot of times because when you see an over eight pick or lean from the model, what typically happens is the projection is usually like 8.8. .8 and you say, yeah, but we're not even projected to get to nine. Anytime the projection then gets over nine, I like it a lot more because that's telling us that we're more likely than not to end up with nine runs. And on top of that, the fact that we win here at four to four, because then we would for sure get an extra run later. There's a lot to like about this. This number should be a lot higher. I know that Cleveland is not typically seeing this sort of weather and usually plays a lot more pitcher friendly, but this is going to be a very hitter friendly environment. What's your take on this one? I wanted, as soon as I saw that this was an option to talk about today, I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to prove to our viewers, we don't just bet Mariners unders. Like the reason that, that we play a lot of Mariners unders is you've talked about a lot, the, the park factors uh, there in Seattle. And, you know, when, when they're playing a team like Oakland or, you know, some of those, um, you know, teams that don't have great offenses, it really just plays into, uh, you know, what's happening there in Seattle. The, the White Sox series where we first yeah. one of those games. White, White Sox series, uh, Angels, uh, Sands, Trout, and Otani this year. Uh, there's just lots of good opportunities to, to back those unders there. But when you get them out of uh, Seattle, I mean, they are an average team uh, offensively. Um, it, Miller, uh, you, you kind of alluded to an average pitcher. You can look at the exact same side on the Guardians and say, okay, well, you've got an average offense here and a bol slightly below average starting pitcher. This is going to be an average game with great weather for scoring. And so take whatever, uh, you know, the average game would get you and just enhance that by, like you said, mentioned 90 something degrees at first pitch in Cleveland. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. This is like, you know, I'm from Texas, so like my view of uh, summer is warped, but like middle of the summer weather for the rest of the country, uh, you don't always get at this point in June yet. So um, I was just especially, say, especially for a night game. This is what I mean. You might see this sure on a Sunday 1 p.m. and like that sort of thing happens, but like a night game is usually not going to be this warm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so um, again, I, I would just say. I, I for sure have to fight this too, like this perception of what the Mariners are offensively. But when you take them out of Seattle, you have to kind of adjust that a little bit and really look at you've got two average teams here with great scoring weather and, um, you know, getting an over eight. I mean, I can't believe this isn't like at least eight and a half or, or something. I, I think there's a lot, a lot of value here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, then, I'll, you know, just to finish off the discussion about the Mariners bullpen, 367 ERA on the season. They're basically rounding error from right in the middle of the pack, which, again, middle of the – and not that ERA is the best necessary metric for an individual, but for when you talk about an aggregate of a bunch of players, ERA is not – the worst because its shortcomings tend to kind of balance out in the long run. So mm -hmm. when you look at that team bullpen ERA, they are being right in the middle of the pack in that play half their games in that ballpark. That's why they're ranked number 21. Like that's not very good. Like in that ballpark, they should be top five if they have good relievers. And so, yeah, you like you put that in uh, into what's going to be one of the more hitter friendly, you know, top five hitter friendly type days of the season in Cleveland. You typically just, again, don't see this weather other than a random, you know, July or August Sunday afternoon game, but to get it on a random Tuesday night game, uh, yep. 
you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes these games, the weather's right, and guys just hit the ball on on, a, on the line, on on on, yep. on the ground. So you never know what's going to happen in one game. But there's just the recipe here for it to be a higher. Sh- this total should be a lot higher. I would not be surprised if people realize at some point this weather and how extreme mm-hmm. it's going to be if this gets bet up. We love the over eight. I'd still play it at over eight and a half. I'd probably lean over at nine, but you're starting to lose a little bit of the value there, getting the push on that rhythm to win. Uh, yep. So over eight, just way too good to pass. But as always, we'll chop around. If your book starts moving the number up, you never know what the other books are going to do. We always say you should have at least three, maybe four books in your in your repertoire to look and shop around. If you don't have an account there yet, BetUS is a good place to have. They typically have some pretty competitive lines out there. 125% bonus on your first ever three deposits up to $2,000 each. That link is in the show description. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. We're going to move forward here to the Diamondbacks and the Nationals. Uh, 6.45 p.m. Eastern, first pitch. Slade Ciccone and Jake Irvin. Ciccone is a you know, younger guy and definitely has some potential to improve right now of all active starting pitchers he's sixth worst in in baseball seventh worst whatever that is uh 124 grade that is very bad six seven era he's not that bad but i mean how much not that bad can you really be when your era is that Uh high uh Uh fip right at six x fip in the upper fours the Diamondbacks offense is solid and the Nats offense isn't, but this is a massive mismatch at starting pitcher with Jake Irvin, who's become one of the more improved starters in all of baseball. That grade all the way down to a 91, number 40. Uh, again, not to say he's the 40th best pitcher in baseball because there would probably be at least 10 to 20 guys ahead of him if it wasn't for the injuries. But he's having a fantastic season, a 3 ERA, 324 FIP, 357 X FIP. These are really solid numbers, solid number two pitcher. If the I don't know exactly what the Nats are going to do, but they've got a couple guys here uh, that teams should be eyeing for, you know, trading for starting pitchers. And he's definitely one of them having a Mm -hmm. fantastic season. This is priced as if it's a 50 50 game. We've got the Nats winning this 56 percent of the time. The threshold for this to be a good pick, according to the model, minus 116, minus 110 is an A grade option for us. Cousin Jerry, tell us more. So my thing here is we last week we said, okay, you've got the Marlins and you've got the Nationals. You got two bottom feeding offenses in the league. And you could just say, okay, look, somebody's not going to score runs. And sure enough, I think that game ended up four nothing. So four exactly, nothing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly like what we said. There was going to be one team who just had had um, problems getting on the board. Um, I would say this is not the opposite of that because the Nationals offense is still involved, but you've got a team like the the Diamondbacks that are, is able to, to score some runs here. The problem is, is that, like you said, they are going up against Irvin, who is really, really improved um, this year. Somehow with this anemic offense, the Nationals are still a 500 team. I have, you know, I, I'm gonna. In, obviously, you can see here, Irvin's been good. The relievers are are pretty good. Tre- Trevor um, Williams has been good. Mitchell Parker's been good. Mackenzie Gore's been good. It's all the pitching. Yeah, um, and which is just befuddle. I, I just 29th rated offense. I, I don't know how you do it, but yeah. the the I feel like this is a good example of how. I utilize sideline to overcome what I have seen with my eyes, which is the Nationals offense is really bad. Why would I want to to back them uh, just seeing that they're the number 29 rated offense? But that pitching has just been so good that it more than makes up for it. And this is a situation um, where you've got, did you say Ciccone on on the mound? Uh, You know, one of the few pitchers that the Nationals offense maybe can look, uh, make look not bad. Uh, and I think that is to your point, he's, he's young, definitely couldn't prove. Um, but you know, major league baseball is just difficult. So nothing really <laughs> against, against him. Um, anyway, so I, I like the nationals here, 500 team. They keep finding ways to win, uh, and against pitchers like this is I think where they could really, uh, offensively make, make some noise. And of course, just expect the pitching staff to do, um, the same thing that they've been doing all season. 
Yeah, disclaimer, of course, we're not insulting you and these are much better pitchers than we are. It's yeah. just at some point, someone has to be yeah. bad relative to everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't think people realize he's just not a major league caliber pitcher. And the Dimebacks pitching staff has just been crushed with injuries. All their pitchers at this point seem a lot weaker. Brandon Fott's the only one that's better than average at this point who's healthy. And, mm -hmm. and that injury uh, situation with him has been mm -hmm. really bad. Yeah. Moving forward, last game here, Brewers and the Angels, Tobias Myers. For the Brewers against uh, Griffin Canning for the Angels in a late night start. Uh, neither one of these pitchers grades up very well. Myers' ERA is solid, but his 505 FIP indicates that he might not be as good as that ERA. Canning, that ERA is probably pretty representative. The model is not very high on either one of these teams. The biggest difference here is the offenses and the bullpens. This Angels offense without Trout is not very good. This Brewers offense has been very solid all season long. Brewers relievers have been solid all season long. The Angels relievers are terrible a lot of the angels pitching is terrible it's been the same story for mm -hmm. years now we've got the brewers winning the 61 percent of the time making minus 139 a good pick we're up getting brewers minus 120 i don't understand why this is priced so low this is a run don't walk in my opinion what's yours cousin jared what's the brewers record here uh the the brewers are 42 and 29 pretty dang pretty dang impressive to be honest i like i and i i feel like the show is all about like 43. <laughs> I, I feel like this show is a lot about going past what is superficial and getting into some of the statistics and everything. But every once in a while, you have to go back and ask yourself, does this make sense? And I feel like I, for whatever reason, I have no idea. This game makes no sense um, to me. I, could you say that the, okay, sideline says it's a wash. Could you convince me that maybe Canning is a little bit better than Myers. Okay, yeah, you could you could maybe convince me. That's oh. a tougher sell for me personally when just looking at it. I mean, FIP is a quarter of a run higher. XFIP's eight tenths of a run higher. I'm not even okay. sure you can convince me of okay. that. Okay, Wait, okay, is there more name recognition with mm, with yes. Griffin yes. Canning? Okay, and yes. could that skew things slightly? Okay, fine, but this much, I mean, that doesn't seem right. I mean, it, it, literally everywhere else you look, like the Brewers are a much, 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 much better team. Uh, literally any way you slice it. So, yeah, I I love the Brewers here. Uh, I thought that with Otani gone, um, we it wouldn't be as profitable to fade the Angels because you know there was a lot of name recognition when o, when Otani was there and you know the, the times that Trout actually got to play as well. Um, but it hasn't been the case. Like people still have just not caught up to how bad the Angels actually are, and it is befuddling to me. Um, at this point. Anyway, I, again, I would just say step back and use some logic in this one. This just doesn't, doesn't feel right. That's a great analysis. You've got a 42 and 29 team against a 28 and 43 team. There's yeah. no real injury situations where it's like, mm -hmm. well, this team, like, it's not like Trout's back or anything. Yeah. Uh, starting pitching is either a wash or honestly, I probably would prefer Tobias Myers. If you made me, what in the world is up with this price? It, it doesn't make any yeah. sense. Uh, I know the version on the road, but the, you know, home field doesn't, doesn't work that much. I feel like I expect the angels to lose every game because they're outmatched just about in every game. And mm -hmm. then they, they win sometimes. So I'm like, Oh, maybe the angels aren't bad. Like they win. They surprise me. They won. And I look and I'm like, yeah, but they're not doing that very often. <laughs> they're yeah, yeah. They, they, they've lost 15 more than they've won. Like they just aren't a very good team. Any yeah. way you slice it. Uh, yeah. This price makes no sense. If this was like minus 150, minus 160, I'd be like, that makes sense. I probably would like, would play the brewers if I, if I had to, but just understanding like this isn't really one of those long-term plays where we're going to be increasing our bankroll over the long run at that price because the Brewers are going to lose this game on occasion absolutely but winning 61 percent of the time is somewhere in the ballpark it's a whole lot closer with the market saying it just over 50 which makes no sense Brewers are a great pick for us that's all we've got here again sign up on Dub Club for more picks more profits all sorts of benefits otherwise cousin Jared parting words to take us out got nothing today all right. Well, that sounds good. Again, remember, hit us up over on Dub Club. We'll have some more shorts for you. So make sure you're catching that. We'll put those up on YouTube. We'll put them up on all these social media platforms as well. Thank you for watching. And as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money. <laughs>